This week on Library Beat, Karen and I pose the eternal question. Read any good books lately? We quiz some of our customers and co-workers about their reading picks. He doesn't yank you. He drags you. <laughs> and then finally at the ending of it, he grabs you by the throat and pulls you the rest of the way. And it's quite an interesting journey. We discuss our top five all-time book recommendations, play our weekly trivia challenge on Reading Roundup from the Garland County Library on Library Beat. Have read a good book. Okay, so <clears throat> new movie, Knock at the Cabin by M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, we have the book. It's called Cabin at the End of the World, and I thought it was going to be very similar, but it's different, and it's worth uh, watching and reading. Excellent. Yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Brent Carroll, or D.B. Cooper, and I'm the tech services librarian. Thanks for participating in Reading Roundup. For- reading Roundup. Love it. Okay, hi, I'm Angel, and I recommend Carrie Soto's Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Very good. It, she wrote Daisy Jones and the Six, yes, which is, is a new TV also series. also a good book. Yeah, I recommend all her books, but this one's really fun because it's like a tennis match, and it's like really tense, and it's a fast-paced read. Uh, my name is John Aiken. Very good. Uh, I live in Hot Springs, uh, and I'm ready to take uh, your questions, sir. All right, well, my question is, have you read any good books lately? Yes, I have. All right. I've read some by Michael Conley that I like very much. And, of course, I like uh, Simon Scarrow and his uh, series of the Roman Army, uh, the various uh, novels that he has produced for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also uh, uh, like uh, Carol Ramsey and her uh, uh, various mysteries. I'm a mystery fan. I can tell. It seems like you probably spend a lot of time reading. I do. I spend a lot of time reading. It's an excellent pastime. It is, uh, and I think it keeps your mind active and fertile. Do you mind telling our uh, listeners how how old you are? I'm 94. 94 years young. (laughs) Thank you. Do you you attribute any of your longevity to your reading habits? Oh, I I think that helps. Uh, It keeps my mind active and so forth. Oh, I just finished reading Lessons in in Chemistry, and it was outstanding. I could not put it down. I learned a lot about cooking, yes. a lot about chemi- uh, chemistry. It was outstanding. I'm so glad you liked yes, it. Yes, I really did like it. Um, I recommend it. Is it's it on the book? Bonnie Garmus. Uh, yes, yes, it yeah. was very, very good. And Greg, thank you for, <laughs> for recommending it. You are very welcome. Will you tell thank our you. listeners your name? My name is Phyllis Collins. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you. My name is Ray. Ray, and yeah. what, what book have, have you read lately that you best I'm tell people about? Reading Billy Summers by Stephen King, and it's really been an interesting journey. Not bad. Stephen King can get pretty twisted. Not yet. Not, not yet. Not yet. No, he's been leading up to it. He drags you. He doesn't yank you. He drags you. <laughs> and then finally at the ending of it, he grabs you by the throat and pulls you the rest of the way. And it's quite an interesting journey. Very good. Well, thank <laughs> you for sharing that. My pleasure. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed that crazy feminist book, Lessons in Chemistry. I mean, Phil- some... Phyllis just talked about that one, too. Okay, because that was just... <sighs> the characters were so <sighs> well-drawn and... Re- relatable in a really quirky way i just i got a bang out of it it's a little dark in spots but it's really it was a fun read i'm I'm glad you enjoyed it that was belinda jonak who used to work with us here at the library um i guess the biggest thing i'm reading right now is freedom by jc dugard um it was based on an abduction and this is a book of all the first things she's done since being abducted um it was released quite a few years ago though pretty interesting read Excellent. Do you want to tell our listeners your name? Sure. My name is Madison Burfine. I'm a Youth Services Coordinator at the Garland County Library. Thank you, Madison. Thank you. We just finished another YA Rangers Apprentice series. How did that go? It was fantastic, and we love John Flanagan, and he needs to keep writing more of them. It's our favorite series. It's the early year series. Mm -hmm. So anybody that is YA and loves adventure and good family stories and friendship, because family doesn't always have to be blood-related. They're friends. Um, Those series are fantastic. 
So the Brother Band series, the Royal Rangers, Rangers Apprentice, we love all those series. That's an excellent recommendation. Yes. Will you tell your name to our listeners? Ashley Packard. Thank you, Ashley. Yes, this is Heather Gio, and I am one of the uh, desk clerks here at the library. So lots of people come through with lots of books. Do you ever see books other people are reading that make you want to read them? Yes, I always uh, end up with more on my to-be-read list that I didn't know that I wanted to read because I see them come through and they look so good. Have, um, have you read anything lately you'd like to tell people about? Uh, yeah, right now I've only got about two chapters left of The Lost Apothecary by uh, Sarah Penner. and. She has a new book coming out. Yes, she has a new book that uh, just came out the other day, I believe, uh, the London Secret London Seance Seance Society. So that one looked really interesting to me as well, and I've seen the Lost Apothecary uh, come through a lot of times, and I had thought that it looked interesting in the past and just decided to pick it up the other day. And um, it is very, very good. It's a kind of mystery that I usually do not read. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's about, uh, some different generations of women, um, in London and, uh, in the past, uh, a woman that ran an apothecary and a lot of mystery that happens between centuries and, and a woman in this century that kind of figures out what happened in the past. Sounds so good. It's very interesting. Thank you very much, Heather. And I'm glad I finally know how to pronounce your name right. Yes, it's it's Gio. <laughs> You're welcome. Karen, this week, I believe it is time for Reading Roundup. Is that correct? That is correct. I'm very excited about Reading Roundup. We've been asking some of our staff members and some of our patrons this week what they've been reading lately, and they've had some great answers. I thought we might uh, go over our top five book recommendations because we get asked a a lot to to recommend books and this summer we are taking a reader's advisory class and yes we are i believe in june june and july maybe sure yeah so that's uh coming up so after that happens we're gonna be experts we (laughs) will be world famous we will be so famous but we do get asked sometimes uh recommend a good book and i've tried to come up with a list of five or so that I could recommend to almost anyone. Uh, And my personal reading is maybe a little more niche sometimes, like right now. Yeah, you're you're pretty smartified. Not always, because right now the one I'm enjoying is a hoopla audiobook on the making of the Valley of the Dolls. That's one that was on my that's on my list, Valley of the Dolls. Which I find fascinating, but I wouldn't expect just everyone to enjoy it as much as I do. Uh, One person we asked for her recommendations was uh, Belinda Jonak, who used to work here, who was a Former master employee. naturalist. Yes. And we might not be able to hear that on the podcast because I asked her outside, which is perfect for her because she is a master naturalist. Yes. But there was a lot of wind, and so the audio might not be very good. But she uh, mentioned one book, uh, Lessons in Chemistry, which several other people yes, it's very had, popular had on their list. And then she said, there are some other books I've been reading which are a little more me and so there are books that are kind of me or you, but then some, sometimes you can think of some books that you think almost anyone would enjoy. So right. that's kind of what we're trying to get to today. Yes. Yes. Do you want to start? Sure. Yes. But I want to tell you about one that my daughter read. It's The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, not Victor Hugo. I keep getting those confused. And it really affected her. She loved it. Uh, She's in high school. She's an avid reader. Uh, She learned some history. She learned some things about the 80s that she learned about uh, how uh, AIDS patients were treated. It it really took an emotional toll on her. That's Uh, what books can do sometimes. Yes, and she just loved this one. It's uh, by Taylor Jenkins Reed, I believe. And so now she's reading all of uh, Taylor Reed's books. One of the people that we, we asked uh, to for reading roundup was Angel, who works with us. And yes. her pick was another Taylor Jenkins Reed book. So she is extremely popular right now. Yes. There's a, a an Amazon series made of Daisy Jones and, and the Six, which is, yes. I'm seeing lots of stories about. Uh, Caitlin has read that one. She liked that one. But this one evidently just really took an emotional, she just had an emotional connection to it. Uh, it's about a lady who's an actress 
and someone is doing an interview with her and she talks about her life and talks about different decades and I would recommend that through my daughter. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Some of the books on my list are ones that I read probably at about the same age. How old is she? 15 Six, or? Si she's 16. 16. And my list, yeah, pretty much goes back to my year, my high school years, middle school years, right. that I will pick back up and, and read again. There, there's something about a book getting you at that age. Yes. It doesn't... Doesn't let, let go. It doesn't I, let go. Well, that brings me... That's a perfect segue. One of uh, my books is uh, called Never Let Me Go. And I did not read it as a teenager because it didn't come out until, I think, 2001 or 2000. It's by Kazuo Ishiguro, who is a... Uh, Japanese author. Well, he's English, but he his uh, family came from Japan. Yes. He won the uh, Nobel Prize a few years ago, which is not too shabby. I've, I've read this book maybe five or six times. I've also enjoyed some of his other books, but to me, this is the most accessible. And this is probably the snootiest book on my list because A, his name is kind of hard to pronounce for some people. And it is a little more literary, but it's also extremely accessible and involving. Uh, it's about these kids who live, go to this sort of strange boarding school in, you think it's probably England. I don't know if it ever s specifies, but um, you, you get very in involved in, in their stories. And it seems sort of like at first, maybe it's just sort of like a boarding school novel, which is kind of a sub genre, but it turns out that something much more sinister is happening to these young people I don't want to have any spoilers, um, but it's just so involving and the kind of questions that it raises um, are really kind of what literature is about. Like, what, what does it mean to be a human being, which oh. is kind of the ultimate question. Yes. But uh, kind of deep. It, it is. That's deep probably thoughts. the deepest one on, on, on my list. But I, I love this book and I would recommend this to just about anyone, even though it might seem at first like, oh, that's not my type of thing. I think if you give it a chance, you would really get into it. I would recommend it to Caitlin, too. I'm gonna, I will recommend that to her. And he was part of my redactyl puzzle the other night. Oh, very good. <laughs> that was, I had to look him up. Well, I'm going to talk about a couple from my high school years. The Outsiders, S.E. Hinton. We weren't um, required to read that when I went to high school. They are now, I believe. But it's just such a great book. Um, I read it several times in high school. I've, I've read it a few times in the last 40 years at being out of high school. But I recommend that one for sure. And another one is Tree Grows in Brooklyn. I read that in high school. And it's a great coming-of-age book. You just can't go wrong with those two. That's, uh, a Tree Grows in Brooklyn is one of my uh, favorites, too, and it's one that I often recommend to people. Yes. And when I do, I mention the librarian in the book. It's about a young girl in Brooklyn who is a reader, and she goes to her local library almost on a daily basis, yes. and she tries to read a book a, a, a day. But like on a special day, maybe on a Saturday, she asks the librarian for a recommendation. And the librarian only has two recommendations. So she just kind of flips between the, the <laughs> two different books that she recommends. And I feel like that a lot because I keep recommending the, the same books. The over. I do too. Same ones. It's, it's not just two, but, you know, close. There's a handful. Right. But A Tree Grows <laughs> in, in Brooklyn. I recently recommended it to one of our patrons who asked me uh, for book recommendations, and she loved it. Yeah, it's a classic. Yes. It never gets old. All right. So I guess it's uh, my turn. I have two on my list that are by Arkansas authors, and yes. I find them handy for, uh, you know, we get tons of people who retire here or have moved from out of state, and they might not be familiar with the literature of Arkansas, which is pretty impressive. Yes, it is. Actually. So uh, one book that I, ha I have not read it recently, but I did read it uh, when I was much younger and I loved it, is I Know Why the Caged Bird it's Sings by excellent book. Maya Angelou, who excellent. grew up in uh, Stamps, Stamps, Arkansas. Arkansas. And um, I probably need to refresh my memory on the, <laughs> exactly it's, what it's happened. It's a happens. hard book. I mean, she didn't have a great childhood. Right. 
Um, but it's a wonderful book. Uh, I believe Caitlin had to read that. I think it is required in high school as it should be. Yeah. It's, it's a great book. Um, I just admire Maya Angelou. I mean, she wrote a lot of other books. But this one, one, though, it, it's, it's very um, easy to read, very easy to get into, and you really kind of feel like you're right there in this little uh, stamps Arkansas, Arkansas going through the Great Depression and um, but it, it's a there's some hard hard things in it but it's a great read that's a that's a great recommendation right there all right what's your next one well you know I was thinking about everything I've been reading lately or listening to I listen to audios more than I read now um, but I've been listening to some cozy mysteries and I never thought that would be a genre that I would like I did find Jen. J-E-N-N, McKinley, her Library Lovers series, pretty interesting. Cozy Mystery is kind of easy, you know, nothing I had to really think hard about. That's fine. Um, So I would recommend those. I listened to them. I didn't read the books, but I listened to like all of them in order. And either Hoopla has them or Libby has them. So I could go back and forth and and find them all. But I would recommend her. She was pretty good. Do they all have the same narrator because that can make a, a, a big difference yes, if you kind of get the, to know that voice yes and, yes if it doesn't have a great narrator the book is you know kind of ruined for me right. but yes she had a great narrator it was the same person all the way through um i chose a cozy mystery too Ooh. and this is one that kind of goes oh, back yeah. to my childhood uh, agatha christie the murder of roger Ackroyd. good one um i think at one time it may still be true jk rowling might have outpaced her but she was the best-selling author of all time yes. And if you read a few of your books, you see why. Uh, they're easy. They're staple. I mean, they're still popular today. Oh, yeah. I think we have pretty much all, all of them. And they. I was kind of surprised that this one was on the shelf because they stay checked out yes. a, a lot, too. Uh, I chose The Murder of Roger Ackroyd out of her 100 books or however many she, she wrote because it's probably got the most ingenious plot twist of any Mm. mystery book and i don't want to give it away if you have not read it but there's something about agatha christie that's just uh very kind of comforting and special but also sinister and evil which is a perfect combination perfect but i think just about anyone would enjoy an agatha christie if if you haven't read one lately recommendation great yes well i'm gonna stay on the mystery vein i like british police procedurals reginald hill Colin Dexter, and I love the Ruth Rendell Wexford series. Mm -hmm. So I like anything like that. And they're also great TV shows. But I I do love the books. I love to listen to the books on those as well. So I I recommend British Police Procedurals. I'm a a Ruth Rendell fan, too, who unfortunately died several years ago. But she was extremely prolific. She wrote, I don't know how, how many books, but a lot. Yes. And she also wrote under another name, Barbara Vine. Vines, that was so, real popular. Yes. Uh, but I've, I've enjoyed a lot of her non-Wexford ones. Really? Um, I kind of, for some reason, got into those easier. I wasn't, sometimes you're not ready to get into a series because it seems like a big commitment. Once you read one, you kind of feel like you have to read 30 books. Yes. So I kind of like the stand standalones, but that's a, an excellent recommendation. If you look up, I think one time I searched British Mysteries, the greatest British British Mysteries, and one of hers that came out in the 60s was always on the list, and it wasn't a Wexford, mm-hmm. and I can't remember the name of it. it is might, it a, a Judgment in Stone? I think so. That one is excellent. I've, I've read that a couple of times. Uh, it's a kind of following up on our Literacy Council visit. It's about a lady who cannot read. And uh, the mm-hmm. first sentence of the novel is kind of famous, something like, I think the lady's name is Eunice Parchman, and it says something like, Eunice Parchman murdered this family, blah, 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 because she could not read. And uh-huh. then you spend the whole book kind of finding out how that all happens. So, she, She's a great author. I recommend Ruth Rendell, and yes. so does Greg. Yes. I've forgotten who's turn it is. I think it's yours. We started talking about Ruth, but it's yours. Uh, In general, you know, as in our library jobs, we try to stay out of politics as much as possible and be pretty neutral. Um, I'm I'm recommending this book not because uh, of any political reason, but just because it is a great book. Robert Cairo? Yeah, Robert Robert, uh, Cairo's uh, The Years of Lyndon Johnson series. There are, I think... Three? There are four Four, and he's working on the fifth, supposedly, which will wrap up the story. But 
Robert Caro's in his 90s now, and I don't think, you Wrap know, when, it up quick, Robert. I know when, when he uh, started this project, he probably didn't know that he'd spend the rest of his life doing it. But if you enjoy biographies, nonfiction, learning about people and places and history, Robert Caro is just the best. He um, is just such a good author finding those kind of weird little details and side stories um, for Lyndon Johnson, who was no doubt a rascal and a character. Yes. Uh, you find out, you know, where he came from, the hill country in, in Texas, what it was like to live back then without electricity and all the backbreaking work that people had to do. Uh, so you know, one of the big parts of the story is electrifying that part of the country. And of course, there are lots of uh, political backbitings and rascally stuff. Very rascally. And I love Lady Bird. Lady Bird, yes. Yes. She's a classic. But uh, re regardless of what you think about Lyndon Johnson as a politician, I would recommend this book. You'll, you'll find either reasons to admire him or reasons to think he was just awful because he was kind of both. Yes. Um, but if you enjoy bi biographies, then pick up a Robert Caro book. Yes. You turned me on to another political series, and Reagan Land was part of it, mm -hmm. and Nixon, and I can't remember. Rick Perlstein. Yes, he's very good, too, and they're very in-depth, and they're at different uh, times. So mm -hmm. I read one about Nixon and then the one about Reagan. But there's one before that. Is it? The first mm -hmm. one, it starts off with Barry Goldwater. Goldwater. So yes, I, think it's I called haven't got to that one. Before the Storm, and these are big, thick books. Yes. But he finds these details about things that are just so fascinating. Yes. You know, he, he connects, uh, like, the movie the, the Exorcist to Jimmy Carter's Malay's era. You know, it's, it's great. Yeah, those are real good. And on my history list, because I actually have a history list too, uh, my favorite history uh, books are about Watergate. Oh, yeah. I love the Watergate. All the President's Men is a classic. And then I read one a couple years ago, uh, Watergate. I think we even did a book club on some Watergate stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think it was 50 years last year. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. But uh, I've read some on Watergate, and they're pretty fascinating, and they're pretty in detail, no matter what you think or what happened. But, you know. Right. Also on biographies, I've got two biographies on my list. Oh, what are I they? do love biographies. And these I've read several times. One is Johnny Cash, another Arkansas favorite, mm -hmm. Man in Black, written by him. It's very good. Um, very good. It also talks about the hardships that people went through during mm -hmm. the Depression. And the other one is Bob Newhart. And you know I love me some Bob Newhart. I know. We talked about that in our classic TV episode. Yes. So those are the two I've read. But I know why Cage Bird sings. That is another classic. I totally recommend that one. Right. Back to you, Greg. I think we've gone through our whole list. We were going to do five. Oh, I, I, I neglected one. Oh, you did. another I, Arkansas author. Another Ar Arkansas author. And I got this recommendation from kind of a strange uh, source. Donna Tart, who wrote uh, Secret History and the... Um, Golden Finch, the Finch Golden. The, she had a big book a few yes. years ago that won the Pulitzer Prize, and it was about 2,000 pages long. She reads the audiobook of this. I found it a little strange because she is um, extremely verbose, and this book is very uh, spare and economical. But she said that this is the book that she would recommend to anyone, and I agree with that for sure. Awesome. It's uh, True Grit by Charles Portis. Can't go wrong with that. You cannot. Book or the original John Wayne movie. Right. Well, you know, we could argue book to movie yes. any time. And, and you've ruined a few movies for me. I, I have. <laughs> and John, John Wayne is definitely great in True Grit, but there's something about actually reading the book right. and hearing the voice of the older Maddie narrating it yes. that is so special and specific that you don't get from any of the movies. So, True. Yes. And I know there's some different things that happen in the book. Right. So that one I would definitely, I would recommend to anyone, anywhere, any age, but especially if you are new to Arkansas. It, it's a great introduction to kind of the true grit spirit that we have here. Yes. Is that our whole list? Well, yes. I had one children's book on my list, uh, Ramey Nightingale, uh, Kate DiCamello, 
I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. My my daughter read it, and then she she loved it, and then I read it, and then we listened to the audio book together, and it's the uh, set in the mid seventies when I grew up, a time frame when I grew up, about the same age, ten year olds, and like seventy four, seventy five. And it's really good. It follows these three 10-year-old girls who live in the South. And it's very, very well done. And so that's the one that I did recommend from the children's department. Very good. Yeah, there are tons of great children's books, too. Um, I enjoyed, as an adult, reading the Harry Potter books. Um, probably, well, when they were popular, but not right when they came, came out. Came out. I, I read them. And I really enjoyed them. I kind never of, could get into them, but, I mean, people yeah, love them. They do, for sure. All right, we are ready for our weekly trivia challenge. And our question this week is uh, related to one of our recommendations. I know you're a big John Wayne uh, fan. I love me some John Wayne. You love John Wayne. He won his only Academy Award. And I know you probably think he was robbed some other times. Oh, yes. But he, he did win once in a role that was related to one of the books that we recommended. So yes. if you can tell us the name of that character, pretty famous character. Famous character, yes. Yes. If you're the first one to write that into us to gcl at gclibrary.com, subject line library beat, you will be the winner of what, Karen? A swag bag. All right. I think we have recommended ourselves silly. So We have, and I hope someone gets something out of this. I do too. Well, thanks for listening. And a special thanks to our Reading Roundup special guest stars, Brent, Angel, John, Phyllis, Ray, Belinda, Madison, Ashley, and Heather. If you would like to participate in a future installment of Reading Roundup, please let us know. You can uh, send us an email to gcl at gclibrary.com or just wave us down anytime you see us at the library. Uh, the name of the Donna Tart book that I mangled was actually The Goldfinch. <laughs>